check on the top 10 standard cards as of the first week of June 2022. So this data basically based on the decks and other information submitted. Uh, deck list uh, tournaments and various locations, whether online or in physical LGS. Those that are given to the EntityTop8.com website. So this, this basis, we're going to have the quantity based on how it was uh, added uh, what we call as the deck usage for the top tier decks in the current standard meta game, as well as the number of uh, cards of these copies, I mean the number of copies that will be used in the main server. So to start with, go with the uh, number 10. The 10th place is for Expressive Iteration. This is a uh, 6 saving card uncommon with this ability and about 28.7% per of the decks are using this with an average of 3.8 to 4 so basically a play set of copies in the main and the top 4 archetypes that are using it are Jessica Dragons, Jessica Control, Blue Red Control, and Pieces Control so anything of a advantage that can basically fix their hand and to dig through answers to the deck uh, makes this a very efficient uh, card draw in the, the in the suspected deck group. So next up at it, number nine is Vaulted Surge. And this is from Kamigawa in the instant. It has the option to deal to damage, but having to sacrifice an artifact gets you the option to deal for them instead to type picture or pencil walker. So the deck operates uh, using this is 29.3% with 2.9 or up to 3 copies for its deck build. So the main uh, deck that uh, uses this is basically Lactos and Bill Surface where they have uh, possibly 4 or a place that copy of this so followed up by Gen Midrange Grixis Vampires also with this mid range and just Sky Hinata. So, given with the current meta game, they have a lot of cards that are producing artifacts. It's basically making this uh, spot removal more efficient in dealing with Menswalkers and other high toughness creatures. So, next for number 8, we have Tenacious Underdog or the Tenacious D as we call it. Uh, this is from Season of Rare. Just a 2 drop for 3 2, but the option of having to glitch it from your graveyard to the late game makes it a more efficient uh, threat and at the same time card draw as a, as a result of the blitz uh, uh, ability. Where then you can basically draw a card after you sacrifice this creature at the end of the end step. So the decks that uses it are 29.9% with an average of 2.8. So I've released three copies in the main deck and some are also using it in the sideboard. Uh, for Rakdos and Surface, which is the main deck uh, as a reference, uh, it has uh, basically four orbs of this. So followed by Judgment Range, Esperafin also using this, basically two copies. This is Pompars also, maybe one or two. As a uh, father for uh, Omnixilis uh, Casualty. And also mono black aggro, given that uh, you have more efficient creatures and two drops. Uh, so basically, mono black is in this uh, place at the copy of this. So next, uh, number seven, we have the Meat Top Massacre, basically the most expensive card in standard in current uh, format. It is from Initial Minute Hunt, Mythic card. This is about uh, average, uh, I think, to 1,500 pesos to 2,000 each. The deck using it is basically 30.6% with an average of 2.1, 2 copies in the main deck and 1 or more copy in the sideboard. So Rock Red is basically the main uh, deck that uses it along with the Anvil, so making the Anvil sacrifice effects more efficient with the trigger ability of the top that whenever a creature control dies, it's going to lose its one life. So combined with the build, basically making it more efficient to lose the opponents at least two lives per turn, along with the, some one ones that we basically chuck in a few points of damage. Along with it, we have Jim also, which uses two copies of this, uh, this is vampires, 
depending on the build, they can also have uh, two to three copies. And Spear Fin, given that uh, the Fin build currently is leaning to a mid range or control is type, so two copies are also added. And for mono black control, maybe four copies for efficiency and to draw the card early on. Next up on number six, we have the Syndica Rising Uncommon Jewel Deception. It averages uh, three copies for the deck, so 30%, 30.6% in the meta game. With Is it Dragons? They say not a spell control as its main uh, deck archetypes that uses it. So basically, it's just a mana type uh, uh, early on, but the variance of having to counter any spell, uh, which mostly uh, early on uh, opponents are used to tapping out to maximize their turns, so Diwari makes it gains the profit of countering it. And later on, if you need uh, extra land, you can just play it for your land in the back. So fifth place is for the Wandering Emperor from Kamigawa Din Density. So white decks are probably the main reason why this uh, flashy legendary Prince Walker is uh, very efficient uh, and as a utility card. We had the decks of 31.2% using it and a average of 3.1, so 3 copies in the main deck for the value. So Mono White is only having 4 of these, Esper might have three to 2 to 3 copies only. Esper Control might have 4. Orsh of Angels also 2 to 3 copies. Boros Agro maybe 3 copies and average and also for Mono White Midrange, which uh, also going with the uh, Invoke Justice deck. Uh, they also using a uh, four copies of playset of this one ring emperor. So number four, we have the gold span dragon. It's still an efficient, uh, probably under the best deck of the meta game for Jeskai or Jeskai dragons. It averages uh, three to three point seven to thirty one point two percent of the decks in the meta game. So basically, having four copies in the deck just makes it more efficient and a good attacker flyer and at the same time with the dragon's combo of uh, pumping the target for multiple copies basically making it a one hit uh, card in certain situations also go aggro on thermal control using this maybe go for four copies and two more for three for just an efficient five drop that uh, gets in damage uh, quick and uh, producing enough mana to protect it from uh, any uh, spot removals also and also threats of opponents may come to So next in third place we have Infernal Grass an uncommon from Midnight Hunt averaging 2 copies for 30.8% of the decks for my Dunbridge deck I'm using only 2 and maybe additional one in the sideboard since it's very inefficient in destroying any target picture, but the costing of two life may be relevant at times. But for Rakdos and Build decks, they can basically just regain the life by having the triggers from the Mythic Massacres and also from the Anvil effects. So just two life is just a small uh, price to pay for efficient spot removal. Along with this per control, there are also ways to gain it by Mythic and also for Mono Black. Uh, some of the setup of the spot removals goes with the Infernal Grass as having 2-3 two, 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 copies main deck with backup copy in the sideboard. Now for the second place of the top 10 cards, we have Luminac Aspirant from Zendika Rising. The stood up picture composes uh, a ratio of 3.9 and basically 4 of copies in 34.4% of the decks in the metagame. So the first uh, aggro deck by utilizing it or maximizing its uh, potential is mono white aggro of course and um, followed up by spur of fin also mid range or also in angels if uh, possible and the uh, latest boars aggro with the uh, boars modified uh, archetype as uh, following following its uh, potential to just pop out the uh, creatures with the counters and benefiting it from them so Mono White basically is the uh, number one aggro deck in the metagame. You mean it's the, the efficiency and uh, 
uh, stability against uh, any other tire decks. So basically, we're making it uh, this card as one of the efficient uh, two drops in this uh, in the deck build. So last but not the least, we have a number of list for this week. For standard, we have Fable of the Mirror Baker from Kamigawa and Dynasty. So this saga rare just basically having lots of value of card draws at Golden Shaman with uh, rating generating token, treasure tokens and at the same time having the flip card of uh, Mirror Breaker sudo effect with uh, just copying any non generic creature you control by having a token and basically gaining all the values uh, such as ATB effects uh, attacking effects and may, may be having uh, sacrifice at end of turn is uh, going also with the triggers such as the triggers from the method massacre and any other edic effects that this token can use so the variance of this card makes it four of scopy so the ability of 3.9 is basically making it, making it four through 47 percent of decks in the meta game so anything any archetype that uses red basically has four copies of this card in the build so the number one archetype that you can consider is the sky hinata we also have june midrange Grixis midrange or which is more person for some copies Racto sacrifice also for unveil and monroid agro also is using this in their lineup so overall that's the top 10 for this uh, week for the standard cards that were used uh, any comment or suggestions you might need to clarify for this video you can just add in the, com in the comment box below so if you like this video you can just uh, subscribe and check more of our next upcoming video and i think you can produce more of this for the coming weeks for not only go discussing deck archetypes, text analysis, uh, top 10 cards, or maybe you can also have top 10 cards from the current set, from the upcoming sets, and news of related to Magic the Gathering, of course. So thank you again for watching, and see you on the next one.